depression. In any city, in any country, go to any rehabilitation compound you can get yourself to. Walk up to the front desk. If the person behind the desk has long, black hair, you are in the right place. If the person has any other hair color, you've come to the wrong place. Run away without saying a word, lest you attract their attention. If you are in the right place, walk up to the front desk. In the saddest voice you can, ask to see the woman who calls herself the holder of depression. The person behind the desk will smirk and ignore you. Do not be impatient. Wait a few minutes and calmly ask again. If the worker pulls out a small journal, try to look at what they are writing. Inside will be a six-digit number. Memorize this number quickly, if you value your life. After they finish writing, quickly and silently make your way to the front of the desk. The worker will stand and motion you to follow them. They will lead you around behind the desk, into a door that wasn't there before. As you enter the hallway, you will be blasted by the sound of unintelligible heavy metal music and scenes of extreme sadness and angst. If you attempt to decipher the music, your eardrums will explode and permanently deafen you. Do not gaze upon the images decorating the hallway. To do so would fill you with an inhuman sadness, causing the suicidal deaths of many unsuccessful past seekers. Should the music change to any other genre, immediately cover your ears and shout, Depression leads to nowhere. Should the music resume, you are safe. Should it remain understandable, do not turn around. It'd be best not to see what is about to take your life, unless you'd prefer to go mad before you die. Eventually, after seeming hours of walking, your guide will lead you to a large, black door decorated with ten macabre drawings. Your guide will exit by an unseen door, leaving you alone. The drawings will be in a line, labeled one through ten. Now, Remove the drawings not labelled as the number the worker was writing in their notebook. Rearrange the drawings until they match the number. Any other combination and the drawings will burn, leaving you trapped in this hall of sadness until you die. If done correctly, the door will unlock. Knock twice. Any more will upset the holder more than she already is. If you hear a woman's voice asking what the hell you want, it is safe to enter. If it is a man's, it'd be best just to close your eyes and accept your fate. If the woman's voice demanded what you wanted, reply with only one sentence. What will happen to the innocent? The door will open. Before entering, do your best to cover your left eye with your hair, or spike it if it is too short. Failure to do so will anger the holder. As you enter the room, you will see a typical teenage girl's room, albeit darker than normal. If you pay attention to detail, you will notice the decoration is not what it seems. Furniture is carved from bone and skulls, lamp shades and wallpaper formed from thin layers of human flesh. As you enter the room, you will notice a small razor on the table next to you. Pick it up. Walk towards the bed and sit, without making a sound.
After a few minutes, a teenage girl, about fourteen or fifteen, will emerge from the closet. She will be dressed in a black robe, covered in spikes and chains. The girl will stare angrily at you, and demand to know what you want with her. Repeat your question from earlier. What will happen to the innocent? The girl will sneer, claiming she doesn't care what happens to the world. Use the razor you picked up to slice your forearm. Allow your blood to flow onto the floor. Doing so should cause a change of scenery. You will appear to be in the pits of a hellish place, surrounded by more teenagers dressed similarly to the holder. In unison, they will recite every betrayal, every breakup, and every sorrowful moment ever to occur in history, and every that will occur. Many seekers go mad from sadness at this point, slicing their jugulars with the razor. If you manage to get through the recital, the holder will turn to you. She will tear a chain off of her robe and throw it at you, then demand you leave. Upon exiting the door, you will find yourself in your bedroom, along with the razor and chain. Check your pocket. A small piece of paper will be inside. The innocent will suffer, and their blood will flow through the streets, will be scrawled onto it in permanent marker. The razor and chain when welded together, are object 308 or 538. Should they come together, all hope is lost.